Hey there guys, and welcome aboard the world famous Jungle Cruise. My name is of course Skipper Megan, and I'm going to be your guide for today. I will also be your snake charmer, your alligator wrestler, your lion tamer, your social director, your dance instructor, and if you don't laugh at my jokes, I will become your swimming instructor. I'm not going to put you through my entire Jungle Cruise spiel, that would be cruel and unusual punishment. I am going to, however, start going into some details about a couple of Disney attractions. I'm going to start a series of history and fun facts about Disney attractions. Every couple of videos or so I will be going in depth. Everything from how the rides work to just some hidden Mickeys that you might find in the ride and all that kind of good stuff. So obviously today we are going to start with the Jungle Cruise because I'm Skipper Megan so where else would we start? So I'm going to first start with kind of the history of the Jungle Cruise and obviously a lot of the history is going to be about the Disneyland Jungle Cruise as opposed to the Walt Disney World Jungle Cruise because the Disney World one was very very similar to the Disneyland one so they kind of already worked out all the kinks with Disneyland and then they kind of just moved that to Disney World in 1971 when it oh, when the park opened. So Walt Disney originally wanted it to be an educational boat ride where there would be guides who drove by real animals and told you all about them. They were based on his series, The True Life Adventures, which was just a nature series where they looked at animals, zebras and lions and gorillas and all that good stuff. So he wanted to have a ride where there could be guests actually getting to experience them because that wasn't something that people could really go and experience themselves outside of a zoo in 1955. So he thought that that would be something interesting to do. Uh, the problem there being, in 1955, they didn't have the technology or the capability to have those animals that close to a boat, that close to a ride vehicle. Um, you can't just have wild tigers and lions 15 feet from a boat and have everything be okay back in those days. So they obviously had to make some adjustments and that's when he came up with the idea of the audio animatronic uh, animals, which we still have today. A lot of the look of the ride was inspired by the movie The African Queen with Humphrey Bogart and it's kind of set in the 1930s era of a British outpost. So you're going into the jungles from this outpost and you're going out to explore and that kind of thing. So that's the theme of the Jungle Cruise. So you're never going to hear people making references when they are Jungle Cruise skippers. They're not supposed to anyway. Make references to anything outside the time period of the 1930s to 1950s because that's where the theme is set. So they really want to keep within that time frame. So the overall design of the Jungle Cruise was made by Harper Goff. He designed it when Disney was wanting to make it the educational experience. Some of the comedic elements came in with the with the help of Mark Davis. He is a very famous Imagineer. He is responsible for things like Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, the Haunted Mansion, lots of great stuff like that. So he was the one who actually suggested in 1962 that they make the ride comedic. He wanted to add some funny lines because to begin with, the Jungle Cruise did not have those puns that we all know and love. So Walt Disney, the story goes, he heard a couple of guests saying, oh, that's the Jungle Cruise, we've been on that before, we've already seen all the animals, we don't need to see it again. Because all of the skippers were just saying the same facts about the same animals and it wasn't going to be interesting for them. And that really kind of upset Disney and he thought that he should start to adapt things and change them. And that was one of the first times that Disney decided to do that and you can see in Disney parks even today that the attractions are constantly evolving, they're constantly changing, and it was all kind of because of the Jungle Cruise. Even though Jungle Cruise was an opening day attraction for both Disneyland and Disney World, the rides started off differently because obviously at Disneyland they, it began as an educational experience, whereas once in 1962 they had updated the script to be more comedic, that was already in place in Disneyland, so when they started building Disney World, they knew that they were going to have that comedic script. So they actually built some of the gags into the ride. And you can kind of see some of those in some places. Uh, things like if you have ever been on the Jungle Cruise and the skipper has asked you if you've seen the Jungle Book. And people say, oh yeah, of course. And they say, well, if you haven't, there it is. And they point, and there is, of course, a book sitting on a box in the middle of the jungle. It's a Jungle Book. Haha. <laughs> so some of those visual gags were already included into the ride of the Jungle Cruise at Disney World. And because some of these things have already been included, the Jungle Cruise at Disney World is actually a little bit longer than the one at Disneyland. The one at uh, Disneyland runs about seven to eight minutes. The one at Disney World runs nine to ten. So you can kind of compare and contrast if you've been on both of them, see where they're similar and see where they're different. It's kind of interesting to see that. The Jungle Cruise stayed pretty much the same for a lot of years. Um, and in their early 90s at Disney World, that was the first time that ladies could become skippers. Up until that point, it had usually been only men who were skippers. They did try in the 70s uh, a couple of different times to have 
female skippers, but people didn't respond to them as well because we weren't supposed to be funny back then for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. But in 94, the Walt Disney World actually had its first female skippers, and they have continued to have them since then. And in, Disney, and in 1995, Disneyland followed suit, and they have always had female skippers since then, too. In 99, 2000, they updated the boats, so they used to have those bright red awnings, and then they always look so clean and pretty and if you are going down the rivers of the world through the Congo, through the Nile, through the Amazon all the time for three months at a time of course uh, your boat's not going to be that pretty. It's just not. So they updated it to those lovely khaki boats. Everything's kind of dingy, a little bit dirty looking and that is when that change took place. And so now that's basically where we are. Uh, it's not really changed all that much from since the time that they updated the boats to now, so the Jungle Cruise has kind of remained the same, and a lot of people think that that's a bad thing. They say, oh, you know, the boat Jungle Cruise really needs to be updated, which apparently it might be now with Dwayne The Rock Johnson having his Jungle Cruise movie. Not entirely sure how I feel about it yet. I'm excited for the movie. Not so sure I'm excited for the changes because I love the Jungle Cruise how it is, obviously. So let me know what you think down below. Do you want it to change? Does it need some updating? Do you want it to stay the same? Let me know what you think. But now I'm going to move on to some of the fun facts about the Walt Disney World, specifically Jungle Cruise, because that's the one that I know the best. So one of the first, first fact, first facts, one of the first fun facts that I'm going to let you know about is some of the hidden Mickeys. Uh, a lot of people go to the park specifically to look for hidden Mickeys, and we actually have taken trips ourselves where that was like our main focus, where we just went and looked for all the hidden Mickeys. So there are a couple on the Jungle Cruise. Uh, the main one that you will see is when you get to the beach where the Pygmy Welcoming Party is going to come out to see you and there are some canoes on the beach. There's some canoes there, should be a picture here on the screen. Uh, if you look closely at those three canoes, they are actually a hidden Mickey, a hidden Goofy, and a hidden Donald. Uh, it's really abstract, so if you don't see it the first time or ever, you're not alone. Um, but you can see that those little horns do look like Goofy's ears, the rounded ones are Mickey's ears, and then Donald has obviously his little duck bill. So that is one of the hidden Mickeys on the Jungle Cruise, and it's one of my personal favorites because it's so abstract and you really don't notice it unless you are specifically looking for it. A couple other little Easter eggs, I'm going to call them, that are hidden in the Jungle Cruise. Uh, if you've ever been to Hollywood Studios and you have seen the great movie ride, we've got another connection to Humphrey Bogart because the scene where Casablanca is in the Great Movie Ride, the front end of that plane is the back end of our plane at Jungle Cruise. So when they tell you that they crash landed and they've been winging it ever since, that is actually the back half of the plane from the Casablanca scene in Great Movie Ride. And there's also a hidden Mickey on that. Uh, some of the rivets down at the bottom form a hidden Mickey if you look for that. Another fun little Easter egg. Uh, if you look at the totem pole, not the totem pole, the pole where the rhino has chased some guys up it. If you look at the bottom guy on the totem pole, his face is actually the same face as the grave uh, caretaker at the haunted mansion. In the graveyard scene, the guy who's holding the dog and shaking, uh, they have the same face. So <laughs> you can see how they really use what they already have and they can make it look so completely different. You would never know unless you compare them side to side to see that they are in fact the same face. At the end of the ride, when you meet the head salesman of the jungle, Trader Sam, his name actually used to be Chief Name because they didn't have a good name for him yet, so they wrote Chief Name, like, question mark, uh, and they never fixed it, so they called him Chief Name for the longest time. But he is actually called Trader Sam now, and he has his grog grotto over the Polynesian, if you feel like going and grabbing an adult beverage uh, with Trader Sam's theming. But if you look at his skirt, that lovely piece of attire is actually remnants of the old canopies from when the boats were pretty and new and red and white striped. So that is just a nod to the old Jungle Cruise and how they have once again used what they had and kind of like to make nods to what used to be. One of my absolute favorite things about the Jungle Cruise that people never ever realize until they're told about it and then you can't unhear it. Uh, like I said, the Jungle Cruise came to Walt Disney World in 1971 when it opened. 1971 was right in the middle of the disco era, so when you come around the corner from the hippos, the attacking natives that attack from the left side of the boat, the third one screams, I love disco. You can't make that up. You just kind of have to listen for it. All right, listen very closely. <laughs> fun facts about how the ride actually works. When you uh, come into the Nile for the first time and you see the African elephants, some of the skippers will say that they have taught their elephant a trick. And they'll pause for a second and they'll tell him to speak and then he'll trumpet and then they say louder and he trumpets again. If you lis listen closely, before they ever tell him to speak the first time, uh, he's going to make a breathing noise. He's going to kind of like exhale 
um, and that means that he's getting ready to trumpet, so that's kind of just a, a cue that most people don't pick up on, but that's the cue to the skipper when to say that line so that it sounds like the elephant is actually responding to them, and don't worry. None of the skippers have actually taught that particular elephant to spray water. He will never spray water at you, so don't get freaked out by that. One of the things, if you ever go on the Keys to the Kingdom tour, they'll tell you some of these kinds of things because it's a backstage tour that tells you about the inner workings of a ride and some of the fun facts. But one of the things that everyone always thinks is really interesting is the Jungle Cruise water is not actually that gross. Um, yeah, it's not super clean. I wouldn't drink it. Uh, some people have tried to do that. Do not recommend. But it's not actually that color, naturally. It's not murky, disgusting swamp water like some people think it is. It's dyed. So if you have ever seen Charlie and the Chocolate Factory where they have the giant chocolate waterfall that churns all the chocolate up and mixes it together, that is exactly what happens at the Jungle Cruise. They put dye in at Schweitzer Falls and it churns up and it dyes the water to make it look more like a nice, disgusting jungle water. A couple of interesting things about the boats. Jungle Cruise is actually fully ADA accessible so that if, if there's any guests that are not comfortable transferring or they can't transfer from a wheelchair or motorized scooter or anything, you can actually just drive uh, straight onto the boat. It's super cool how it works. Um, you, there's a thing that swivels out, you drive on and they swivel it back down and lower you down and you can just stay in your chair and I think that's super great that Jungle Cruise and Disney in general offer that kind of service because I've had a lot of people who really appreciated that and you know everyone should get to enjoy the Jungle Cruise. And one other super interesting thing about the boats is uh, there has only been one boat to sink and it was the Sankaru Sadie. You can't make that up either. I'm going to finish this up with a couple of famous Jungle Cruise skippers. Uh, a lot of people like to say that Steve Martin was a Jungle Cruise skipper or things like or Robin Williams was a Jungle Cruise skipper. There's nothing that I have ever uh, heard or seen that has supported that. I really wish that we could say that. Uh, I do know that Steve Martin worked at Disney World, or Disneyland rather. Uh, he worked in Frontierland, but at a magic shop. But there's nothing that I have ever seen or heard to verify that he actually worked at the Jungle Cruise. John Lasseter, however, did work at the Jungle Cruise. He is now the head of Disney and Pixar Animation. Um, another big one is Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner was a Jungle Cruise skipper, and he actually met his wife while he was working at uh, Disneyland. So, jungle magic all around. So I think that is just about it for the Jungle Cruise part of our Disney History series. I hope you learned something new about the Jungle Cruise. I know that it is one of my personal favorite attractions even before I was a skipper. So if there's an attraction that you really love and you'd really like to know some more about or you have some information that you'd like to share with us, let me know down below. I'd be happy to take some suggestions on which attractions y'all would find most interesting. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, y'all.